the water, the wet sand, the damp sand and the dry sand. That's why I picked this painting for us to do today. So the sky is just a simple cobalt blue wash, so I'll get my little pipette. I don't need a huge am amount at this stage. And just cobalt blue. There we go. And that's probably good enough. When you're testing your colours, you mix them, then take out about half the, the moisture on the edge of your palette, and then use a sheet of paper, watercolour paper, and then you press lightly, and then drag it across. That's the tone. It'll always look darker in here because of the depth of the, the water. This is, close, this is closer to what you're actually going to see in your painting. In fact, I'm going to add a little bit more, just make it just a bit stronger. Okay, so all I'm going to do, I've got pick up my size 16 brush, fully loaded. There. If you can't cover that in one brush stroke with a size 16 brush, you're not picking up enough paint. And then I'm going to just dip my brush in clean water, and run that down. And I'm going to run that into the, into the uh, ocean about a centimetre, maybe a centimetre and a half. And then I'm just going to soften that edge. There we go. I don't want a sharp edge there. I'm going to make this a bit stronger. I'm going to put a slight angle on this because in my painting I want the light to come from this side so there'll be a bit of a shadow there so the paint in the, the, um, the sky will have a little bit less colour here and a little bit more down, a little bit darker down this end. There we go, something like that. I'll get rid of those hairs. Okay, but it's just basically just a simple graded wash. Now I'm going to go and dry that, and I'll just soften this. There we go. You want this here to just to stop at a very pale edge. Now I'll go through the actual wetting process. Let that sit there. Now we'll, we'll look at our colours. So if we look at the ocean, you, you can obviously it's it's a much darker blue than the cobalt blue. I'll leave that cobalt blue there because I'll I'll use some of that when I'm doing the sand. Probably don't need to use all of it. So let's just grab some. Put some more water here, but the ocean is more of a, a, a navy blue. So let's start with French ultramarine for that. And add a little bit of burnt sienna.
Now there's our sky color. If we look at the, the photo, you'll see the sky, there's the sky, there's the water. The water is much darker than the sky. Here, if, if I just left this as, as it is here, it's nowhere near dark enough. So that says I have to add more paint, but no more water. Now obviously if you hadn't put enough water at the start, you'll have to add some water to it, but in my case I think I've got enough there to do the ocean. And that's pretty right, maybe just a little bit more. Okay, that's good. That's, that gives me a good tonal variation. And then as I come closer, it's got more of this green in it. And it's lighter. It's, you, could, you could tell it's not as dark as what it is in the distance. Maybe a little bit more water. And for this one, I'll add some French ultramarine and burnt sienna. But I'll also add some cobalt turquoise. And just a little bit of the Oriolan, or if you don't have Oriolan, Windsor Lemon will do too. So it's a blue with just a hint of green to it. Maybe a little bit more Oriolan. And that's pretty good. Okay, so there we go. So these uh, white foamy bits are going to be a dry brush stroke and I'm not aiming for them to be in exactly this place. With practice, you get better at placing them, right? But in a way, I'd be happy not having this one right on the edge, so I'm happy to move it in. But it's the speed of your brush stroke that's important. If you try to paint these and paint around them, it's gonna look terrible. So really, you've gotta get that dry brush stroke and well worth you practicing. Okay, so now, I've got my colours, I'm going to wet the back of this paper again. All right, so the only challenge with this so I've managed to get a little bit of um, water on the front here. And normally that's not a problem, but in this case, it's something I'm going to have to fix later. The same here. Again, if you're using cold press, it really isn't a problem because with cold press you can lift the, color, the paint out quite easily and if need be, even turn it into a cloud or something. The front of the paper is dead dry, okay, but it's cold or cool to touch and that tells you that there's a lot of moisture inside it. So I'll start with a size 16 and then move to a size 12 brush. The size 16 will let me paint the horizon much more easily. And what I do for that, pick up a paint brush with lots of paint in it. You see how I'm holding it at this end. And then we just start at that edge and just very gently move that across. Okay, so that was one brush stroke. Then I'll very quickly go back to my size 12 brush because now I want to speed up my brush strokes. Just get that edge moving. There. So very quick mark, so I do leave the odd broken edge there. 
That'll do. And I'm using the same consistency of paint all the way across. I don't paint down here and then start painting up here. And now, without cleaning my brush, I'll just pick up some of this green paint, or slightly green paint. And if in doubt, it's, it's better to leave more foam that you can get rid of rather than uh, less foam. If you do lose the foam, okay, you, you can just get out some um, gouache later and, um, and, and paint with that. Okay, now I'm going to pick up a little bit of the cobalt blue just for another transition. And you really want broken edges here. Just vary the colour a little bit. And underneath some of these um, foam bits that I've left there, I'll just darken it. So I'll get some of these darker colours. You can see how this wave has got a light area and then a darker area. The light area is reflecting some of the cobalt blue of the sky, which is why it's, and also it's a bit more transparent there. Again, it's just, you don't have to do it to all of them. And as we come forward, there's just a hint of this brown starts to enter the picture. Pick up some of this green here, move it over to here, and I'm going to add just a tiny bit of burnt sienna. Too strong, and add a bit of raw umber, more water. Let's spread up. And now we're onto the wet sand. And we'll just get some of this cobalt blue and add a little bit of um, burnt sienna to that. And then maybe a bit more blue, a bit more water. Oh, that's a bit too blue.
And now we'll pick up some a little bit of uh, burnt sienna here. But this is not a hard edge. Here you've got more of a defined edge because of the, the foam, but here's not a hard edge. So we, we have to paint into the wet sand above. Maybe a little bit there. Clean the brush, the edge becomes warmer. There we go. Like that. And then we're probably into raw umber for this much lighter passage. So this is really quite a quick painting, certainly to get it to this stage. Get some water, weak grow umber. Very pale. And we'll paint into this. Now I think th this area here could be a little bit stronger, so I'm going to just pick up some more burnt sienna. And just to find that edge just a little bit better. There we go. That'll do. And then this needs some colour on it. The sand colour is, is pretty much this colour here, maybe a little bit brighter. Um, so what I'm using here is just very weak raw umber. So we'll start with that. I'm going to soften some of these edges here because the grass is going to be painted through that edge. And just a quick dry brush stroke. I have to leave a little bit of texture here. Lots of water for this. getting rid of any white paper that I don't want. I'm going to add a little bit of warmth to this by picking up some raw sienna. Because while it looks flat on the photo, th there would be some variation. Hardly any water in my brush or, or paint in my brush, but there's these little um, undulations. There, just a few. Let's get some of this cobalt blue. I'm going to add a little bit of burnt sienna to it. That's better.
just splattering some paint following the contour of the sand dunes and then the odd one just to break it up. We don't need to do a big number on it, this is just an impressionist painting and these are like notations, oh yeah there's some undulations, they're a bit cooler than this other area. This is cobalt blue, wet sand, right? Not damp sand, but wet sand. So it's cobalt blue reflecting the sky with a little bit of burnt sienna being the sand underneath. This is damp sand, so it's more burnt sienna, and it depends on the colour of the sand. In this case, it is quite reddish sand when it's wet. Burnt sienna with just a little bit of cobalt blue. And then very, very weak raw umber. And I threw in a little bit of raw sienna in, in this area as a wet on wet shape just to you know, subtly change the, the, the colours. But I've also left quite a bit of white paper there which will hopefully help bring this forward once I do the grasses. All right, so now we've got a you know, pale grey on this post uh, and then the grasses are going to be you know, dull greens and some browns. Obviously I'm, I'm not going to need these really dark colours. I'll just, let me just clear up some of my palette. So for the post, we don't need a lot, it's a very small shape, so just a size 8 brush and some cobalt blue. and a little bit of burnt sienna and maybe a little bit of raw umber as well. I'm just hunting for a, a cool grey and that's probably good enough. do and then there's remember I said I want my light coming from this side so I'm just going to get some of this um, this sort of color here but with a bit more water in it and I'm going to just run that down this side of the post wet on wet and that'll give that post a little bit of form then when that dries I'll, I'll put in some of the texture and the and the wire. And then for the grasses, I'm going to try something. Always instills confidence in students when the tutor says I'm going to try something. You know, had I used masking fluid and masked this, I probably would have also thrown a few tufts of grass up here. So, um, because here we've got light against dark. And I could use some gouache and, and I might still end up using gouache. But what you can also do is you can get just your brush, just with water and, and the tip of this, this brush here. Not everywhere, but you still want to see the water on the other side. And not all of the grass here is going to be sunlit. So we'll just let that sit there. And in 30 seconds or so, I'm going to just press my tissue on it. While it's doing that, let's have a look at the grasses. You know, this here is sort of this colour. So it's already a dull green anyway. Add some raw umber to it. If it's not green enough, you can add some more of the aureolum. And that's pretty good actually. And then here, we've got the burnt sienna, the brown grasses. The more I look at it, the brighter it seems to be. So I'm going to start with the burnt sienna.
add a little bit of this. So effectively a bit of tiny bit of French ultramarine in there. And then for variety over here, a little bit of water. So for this one, it's just going to be raw umber. All right, now I've probably waited enough for this. That helped. I wouldn't say it fixed everything. What I can do, the, these stiff synthetics, you can also use them to just lift out. The paint I lifted out, I'm going to just accentuate that a little bit. And, and this is light enough that I could probably get away with just, just painting straight over it, but it doesn't hurt to know these techniques. That gives me enough white paper that I can um, make that area look a little bit more pleasing. I'll pick up my fan brush. I'm going to make this a bit stronger in tone. And I'm dragging my brush to the edge of my palettes to take out about half the paint. So I'm starting with my brighter colours. And these are partly in shade, so if I need, I can pick up some of this blue, you know, this deep blue here, and that'll just darken them a bit. And I'll get some of this green. Just here and there. So by lifting the paint, the, where the raw umber hits the, the area I've lifted, you get just that little bit of an extra highlight. That's all I wanted to achieve with that. Here, this is not dry yet. I might just go and quickly dry that. Then I can finish that post. I'm just going to wet the board. I don't really need to wet the back of the paper because all I'm doing now is wet on dry work but by wetting the board the, the paper should stay fairly flat. If you look at this post it's got some interesting texture on it and I can use my fan brush to create that. I'll just mix light grey, just a bit of cobalt blue, a little bit of burnt sienna and then maybe make it a bit stronger. You're always thinking about water content when you're painting with watercolours. And you could just use a, 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 a pointy brush like this. Soften the leading edge fraction. Really just, just enough to put a bit of texture there. Now I've got to dry that again.
All right, now I'll go back to my fan brush. Now I'm just interested in creating an interesting pattern of the, uh, uh, the grasses on the sand dune without trying to paint every blade of grass. Vary the colour. Vary the angle too so that it doesn't look like all the grass is heading all in one way. If you look at this, you've got grasses that are bent over, some going out this way, some going back the other direction. There's a few stringy bits. And I step back every now and then to have a look at um, the basic shapes, making sure I'm not creating something too regular. a few other little marks. Now, and in here, there's some quite dark passages. So these grasses would have a shadow, so what I'm going to do, 
I'll mix it with just some French ultramarine, a little bit of permanent rose, a little bit of burnt sienna. And remember the light's coming from this direction, so maybe a bit too strong. Here and there. Just hinting at the shadows. And again, depending on the angle of the grass, not everything's going to have a shadow. On the um, sand, you quite often get, you know, seaweed or other bits that have fallen on it. Just to add a little bit more interest in these areas that are fairly plain looking. Just some burnt sienna and just a little bit of French ultramarine. Again, vary the spacing. Just avoid any regularity. Fine, you do need to add some water to your gouache, otherwise it's just too thick and doesn't necessarily come off the, off the brush. So this just breaks up this sort of open area. Just some darker birds for the distance.
just put the wire there. I'm going to clean my brush out, take out about three quarters of the water and then just, just soften here and there. Uh, I'll drop in some more. Just to, you think of this as a rusty wire and some of the color has bled into the wood there, right? And I'm going to add a little bit more texture to this. So I'll use the point of this brush. And a bit more here. And I'd still, I wouldn't put my signature here. I think it, it, this shape is drawing the eye too close to this area. So I'll, I'll squeeze my signature down here. I want to zoom into this area just to give you an idea. Because to me, this is the beauty of watercolour. Let me see if I can... See how all those colours flow into one another? Oops. Get your finger out of the way, Joe. Um, or here. You know, you've got these colours flowing into one another and then the shadow and some of that colour bleeds into it and to me that's that's the beauty of watercolour. Mm -hmm.